Now, talking about insulin makes it easier and easy to transition into other cardiometabolic problems just because of ins insulin's influence on cardiometabolic health through so many mechanisms. Well, once again, lectins are very relevant here. Let's start just again by revisiting a little more evidence on adipose tissue in the context of obesity. Inflammation in adipose tissue is a hallmark of insulin resistance. I've said this before, that much of chronic slow insulin resistance begins in the fat cell or adipocyte. A 2016 study in Journal of Nutrition found that animals fed high lectin diets like that, including legumes, exhibited increased fat mass and adipose tissue inflammation compared to controls. Importantly, this is even after controlling for things like calories. Lectins triggered immune activation, resulting in an increase in cytokines like C-reactive protein. And again, remember, the more inflammation you have, the more insulin resistance is going to follow. And so all of this leads to a disrupted metabolism of fat within the fat cell. And as they found, it promoted fat accumulation. The study also observed macrophage infiltration into adipose tissue, which is a strong feature of obesity-related insulin resistance. So let me just paint that picture. Within the local neighborhood of fat tissue, we would have the invasion of macrophages. So basically, a neighborhood consisting of just fat cells now has these angry, very pro-inflammatory macrophages moving in. And you can literally see this happening when you are looking at a staining or an image of the fat cells, of the fat tissue. You can see a bunch of macrophages. All right, now let's move on to cardiovascular effects. Lectins can also affect cardiovascular health. A 2002 study in toxicology showed WGA, that's the wheat germ agglutinin, increased platelet aggregation in vitro. Now this was a, a cell culture type study, but when the lectins went up, the platelets were binding together more. And of course, this then raises the risk of things like thrombosis or a blood clot. A 2013 study found that peanut lectins directly activated inflammatory pathways under the control of a master regulator of inflammation called NF-kappa-B. And this specifically happened in endothelial cells. The endothelial cells are the cells that line the blood vessels. And this, in turn, upregulates these things called adhesion molecules, like ICAM-1, for example. So it makes it more likely for things like macrophages to get stuck along the sides of the blood vessels. And that is a pivotal event thought to contribute to atherosclerosis, so plaque formation. And even with the blood vessel, like the endothelial cells, insulin is relevant. Endothelial dysfunction reduces insulin's vasodilatory effects. So insulin normally, when it comes through a blood vessel, will tell the endothelial cells to change the diameter of the blood vessel. And the more you are widening blood vessels, the more blood pressure is going to be controlled. Well, lectins are disrupting that. So we have this chronic sort of vascular level inflammation contributing to a lack of vasodilation, contributing potentially to the direct formation of the plaque by making it easier for macrophages to stick to the walls of the blood vessel and then get into the blood vessel wall, which becomes the core of the plaque.